People are dying on our streets. So how do we make our streets holistically safer? No matter where you live or what you do in Hamilton, you should have the right to be able to be safe on the street. Today on the O Show, we try to tackle the issue by talking to two people with incredible insights into street safety. One is Chris Earle. He's a PhD candidate at McMaster University and was witness to a very serious car accident on our streets and prompted him to write an op-ed in the Hamilton Spectator on how to make streets safer. Also, we'll be talking to Yelena Vermillion, activist for transgendered rights and the rights of sex workers. She's with Swap Hamilton, and she's going to talk about street safety, the infrastructure around it for sex workers and for all of us and how to create a safer community, one free of violence and one that respects everyone. I actually wrote the op-ed because I was witness to one of the really bad accidents that happened at the corner of King and Dundurn. Uh -huh. My partner and I were going to go get groceries and we saw the immediate aftermath of when a, a transport truck ran into a car with you know, a, a male driver and his uh, young passenger. It was really upsetting to see. And the whole community was standing around looking at, at this this awful scene on our roads and everybody was saying the same thing. This just keeps happening. And people are, are scared. They said that they were scared to be out on the street, to be walking the streets of their own city. It's not fair that we, the residents of Hamilton, have to wonder whether or not we're going to make it home alive after going out and doing something as natural as going to get groceries, filling a prescription, seeing somebody that you know, may need our, our help. I think that it's, it's a controversial issue because a lot of counselors don't experience this, the road system the same way we do. People like Councillor Ferguson they spend all their time in their cars out in the suburbs. You know, and uh, they, they forget that a lot of their own residents, a lot of the people in Ancaster also want safe streets. Councillor Ferguson says things like if you convert Main Street to two way, then Ancaster residents won't come downtown. But he forgets that once Ancaster residents are downtown, they're walking as well. They may come downtown to see a show at First Ontario or you know, uh, take in a game at, at the, the Coliseum, but then they're gonna wanna walk to James Street. I mean, that's what really got to me was, mm -hmm. so a few complaints uh, to an old guard counselor who probably if he runs can, you know, has a pretty good shot at getting the gig again, is going to weigh more than the safety of other Hamiltonians. Mm -hmm. It's it's not accurate at all. It it ignores the fact that there are a wide array of people who, who use a whole bunch of different transportation methods across the city. It doesn't matter if you're in Stony Creek or in Dundas or in Waterdown. You, ha you should have the right to cycle if you want to, walk if you want to, and if you're driving, drive safely. I think one of the most important things we can do is have counselors be active in the community, speaking to people's concerns and having those important one on one conversations, as well as all of the engaged Hamiltonians taking all the facts that we have and consistently putting them out there. The old guard counselors have the benefit of using the, the knee jerk reaction to things, and they will often keep cycling through the same talking points again and again. So it's important for those of us who want safety for streets, to have those conversations, not just online, but with our neighbors, with people in our community, with our family members who may think differently, consistently bringing up those facts and providing that alternative perspective. Well, I love that. I mean, it sounds like the, the methodical and appropriate way to educate public, raise public awareness around the facts. Um, but can that be done before October 24th? I mean, we're under 200 days, I think, now in my little election clock in my head that's been running for four years. Um, can we get that information to people? Uh, obviously, your op-ed is, is a way to do that. We're trying to do that here on the O Show. The good counselors are trying to do that as well. Um, but do you think that the counter narrative that's being put out there, that somehow if you're for safe streets, you're anti-car, that somehow if you're for safe streets, you're radical progressive. I mean, do you think that that counter narrative, almost a fear-based narrative uh, is going to keep people from really looking at the facts and understanding the need for these changes. 
I hope not. And I have enough faith in the people of Hamilton to listen to a whole bunch of different sides from the uh, from the arguments that that come to them. And I honestly have a lot of faith in some of the great progressive voices we are seeing stepping up and offering to run for council. It's going to be their responsibility to carry that message forward and be consistent when they're at the doors, when they're in debates, when they are writing articles for the spectator, when they're talking to you. It's important that they continue to hammer home the same message over and over and over again. And I think some of them are, are quite adept and ready to do that. I'm seeing great voices, especially, you know, Kojo Danthi is one of the first and most impressive voices who's been doing this. And I'm really excited to see him push that message that you can't, you aren't necessarily you know, anti-development or anti-progress if you want safer streets for all. Right. I mean, it comes down to livability. You know, it's, it's, it's not, to me, it's almost not even ideological. Call me a progressive if you want, whatever label fits you <laughs> that you want to put on me, for instance. But I want my kids to be able to move around safely. I want people who are in wheelchairs to be able to move safely through the city. You know, in the winter, they can't even get the snow cleared for them. Like these things don't seem like they need to be ideological. They seem like they are practical issues. And also economically, cities that get this done are more livable and more competitive. And companies want to be there because we've worked some of these things out already. I mean, with these, these fights that we seem to have been having having for 20 years uh, aren't just about people staking their positions or protecting their little fiefdoms on council. They have held the city back uh, from opportunity and investment. So, so I, I, I take your point, like, let's get the facts out there and let's, let's start to demand the kind of changes we need. Can I ask you what some of your other suggestions were in your op-ed? Because again, it wasn't just the two-way conversion of Maine. Mm -hmm. It's some very small interventions in the local you know, side streets, you know, neighborhood streets, bringing to mind the, the tactical urbanism that some folks did at the uh, intersection of Locke and Herkimer when some folks went out in the middle of the night and just drilled some, uh, some pylons into the street to create a safer crosswalk for, for their children who were crossing and there were a lot of incidents there. You know, things like that, having bump outs on the curb so that cars are forced to slow down, uh, Im implementing things like uh, roundabouts, which again, force drivers to think differently about the, the road environment uh, and ultimately widening sidewalks. If anyone has ever tried to walk down Maine or King, they know that they're this close to traffic that's sometimes going 60, 70, 80 kilometers an hour. Widening sidewalks is a really big and important thing. But I think the most controversial thing I said was uh, actually talking about speed cameras. Folks don't like speed cameras. But if folks think they're going to get a big ticket for going too fast, they'll think twice about it. Totally. And, and you know what? It's just the way that the rules are. If you're not going to wear a seatbelt, you're going to get a big fine. If you're going to speed, who cares whether a camera catches you or a cop with a radar gun? It's probably safer for the cop if it's the speed camera than the radar gun. But even the roundabout idea, you know which place in Hamilton has the most roundabouts that I've seen? Ancaster, right? So, so Ancaster's figured out the roundabouts slow down the traffic in their neighborhoods. Somehow, I think that maybe Councillor Ferguson is listening to some constituents in Ancaster about road safety, not all of them, because I, I have to believe that they understand the value of making their neighborhoods safe no matter where you live in this city. So as we just uh, wrap up this discussion, what are your hopes? I mean, how did you feel when you saw that council actually historically passed this restoring Maine back to the way it used to be in the days of sanity to two way? It'll take a long time to get it there. But what did you feel when you saw that? I thought that was an incredible step in the right direction. That was so heartening to see, especially with community members out in the public plaza in front of City Hall demanding change and change actually happening. That was incredible. I mean, you can always rely on councillors Wilson and Naughton to do the right thing when it comes to listening to Hamiltonians and responding in a forward thinking, fact based way to the problems we face. That was absolutely amazing. 
I think it is really important that we as community members keep that pressure on because each of the things in that motion are going to come back to city council and they're going to have to vote on it again. And we saw with LRT, if you give them multiple chances, they'll find every excuse they can to pull back. So I think it's really important that we keep on uh, keep on council, but it was great to see. I'm so happy about that. That is excellent advice. And one of the reasons I love having you on the program, sir, is that, <laughs> I mean, we can, we can say, wow, what a victory. That was, that was lightning fast. And they did their homework. They put out a great motion right away. But I remember with LRT when we thought we had it and then we heard talk by some long-term counselors of an exit ramp strategy, right? Um, when, they, when they're looking for the easy way out of these difficult decisions, it's where we start to delay any kind of progress in this town. So stay on it. I love that. And when you mentioned that citizens were out there in the forecourt, I couldn't help but thinking of, you know, Kojo Dampty when his uh, announcement for candidacy was stopped and he was pushed off City Hall forecourt right on that skinny sidewalk. And there's a photo that we showed here on the ocean of that big transportation truck barreling right past there, right? Um, this is a life and death thing that we fix these streets. You know, it shouldn't be ideological. It should be, what are the facts? How do we protect citizens? And frankly, and tell me if you disagree, but I think job one for an elected official is the health and safety of the people that they represent beyond and above everything else. Oh, absolutely. I absolutely agree. I was there at that campaign announcement there with Kojo and Sabrina and Ahona who were running for the school board. And I actually saw one of my neighbors here on, on my street who was walking down, down the street and wanted to participate. Uh, and he was worried about trying to get around because these big transport trucks were coming back and forth you know, on, on, the, on Main Street. He's a, an older man with some uh, difficulty walking and that just really hammered home the need for for these kinds of candidates to participate in the conversation and hopefully have a, a voice uh, around the, the Council of Horseshoe come the next term. And for them to be treated with dignity. I mean, I've never seen any other candidate have their announcement on the forecourt kicked to the sidewalk other than Kojo Dampty. And while the city has said they're going to relook at their whatever bylaw garbage spin they came out with after the fact, uh, they interrupted his and pushed it to the curb. And I, I think hopefully if anything, it just engendered more support and more awareness that there are real efforts to, to push down the voices of people who are fighting for progress in our city and we, can't, we cannot stand for it. So thank you so much. Uh, and I just, I just last point, the fact that somebody wanted to participate in a democratic activity and was afraid that they wouldn't be safe enough to be able to access it just just makes the point of our conversation right you know come on hamilton let's let's get it together the election is october 24th you sir are fantastic thank you so much for being one of the voices people trust on the issues that they care about and they can read your full op-ed in the hamilton spectator how to make our streets safer it's a great read and uh, we'll have you on again soon i'm sure thanks so much thank you i really love being here thank you it is such a thrill to have on the show Yelena Vermillion. Not only is she someone I deeply admire for the advocacy work that she does within uh, Hamilton and more broadly, uh, but just a terrific person who has some great compassion for our city and for others. And, and as we're having this discussion around street safety, it's not just about vehicular safety, although we'll talk a little bit about that, um, but also the safety of people who work in the streets, people who are part of our community, are they safe? Uh, and so, Yelena, you come at us both as someone who is an advocate for transgendered rights, but also with SWAP Hamilton, which looks at protecting and educating and supporting and advocating for sex workers in our community. And so before we get into a lot of important issues today, can you just tell us right away about the great news that SWAP Hamilton has? Because I want to make sure our viewers hear it right out of the gate. You betcha. So we have a new uh, space on Barton, a commercial space, 771 Barton Street East. We're near the intersection of Lotridge, um, in between Mikey's Cream Pies and Thurland Conservation. Um, we're really excited to take forth the work that we've been doing and sort of anchor it within the community on the stroll, the Barton Street stroll, um, providing better access to the resources that we can offer and uh, refer our, our service users to uh, on in the actual community that we provide service to. So, and, and with that, we're also looking to uh, ramp up our programming and events that we are able to host both in person and virtually. So I mentioned off the top that uh, you have such compassion because I think that 
you know, given what you observe, what you experience, what you know of the challenges and the struggles that sex workers endure to try to, you know, work with dignity, um, but also their safety. And, and we're seeing right now in the U.S. an attempt to repeal transgendered rights. Uh, so, I mean, you're dealing with real life and death issues. So can you just give us a sense, Yelena, how unsafe are the streets of Hamilton from your perspective? What is it like um, for the people that you work with and for yourself in our community? What do we need to understand so that we can have better empathy and do more? Right. So first off, I'd say that the main reason Swap Hamilton was started was to follow and carry on the legacy of Big Susie's. Big Susie's was the former sex work organization in Hamilton. Swap Hamilton carries on the torch of trying to combat stigma in our communities. And so we, when we're talking about street-based sex workers, we're talking about people in our community who people often have negative opinions about without any real reason, without any real understanding of what that person has gone through to make that decision, why they continue to make that decision. Um, in conjunction with police violence, being targeted by police erroneously because of the laws that are currently, uh, currently apply in Canada. Uh, we have Bill C-36, as, uh, also known as the Protection of Communities and Exploited Persons Act, which is uh, an ironic title because it does not protect exploited persons, it does not protect uh, vulnerable peoples, what it does is it exploits them and makes more vulnerabilities for these people who are already seeking survival in a precarious world. So Hamilton, especially the Barton Stroll, uh, even before I moved to Barton, um, it, was, it was told to me is that's where you go to find a sex worker. Um, and I think that people don't often see sex workers as part of the community, as our neighbors, as our peers, as our friends. Um, they see them as nuisances. And that's what we at Swap Hamilton really like to combat is, our, is, is taking that attitude of stigma, of shame, of judgment, of prejudice, and educating, bringing to light, and also just claiming space, saying that we belong here because we are members of the community. And if you think of us as criminals because you don't understand that the application of law is unjust and wrong, then we're here to help explain why sex workers as workers, first and foremost, as human beings, uh, deserve rights, deserve to be treated with dignity, and deserve to seek a wage uh, on their own terms, um, whether it be on the streets or in a private residence, without being persecuted by their peers and their neighbors or fellow business owners. Well, I hope that where you are on Barton, as the community gets to understand what SWAP Hamilton does, the counseling services you have, the advocacy that you do, creating a, a more compassionate community and space, I hope that they'll welcome you with open arms and, and understand that you're part of the community and for the community, right? Um, because we don't understand what we don't experience. And a, a lot of people have these, these stigmas and these ideas. Uh, what is it like for you and what has it been like for you and your community and the people that you're working with and helping going through this pandemic because for so many of us you know we've complained about the changes to our work-life balance or this or that or the other thing um but what has it been like for for sex workers sex workers have faced a devastating impact from the pandemic from many of us not being eligible for serve because of a result of the criminalization of their industry and, and thus many of them have to act surreptitiously um, to avoid that criminalization. Many of us uh, have had to change housing situations because of the continued efforts of unscrupulous landlords trying to gentrify Hamilton to kick people out, renovate, and then charge for higher rent. Um, we've seen many sex workers lose contact with us because either they are reprioritizing, you know, focusing on their life, or many of them, not many, I would say, but there have been some that have passed away. Uh, either from overdose, from, from the effects of poverty. And we're really sad to see that, you know, the federal government isn't caring about sex workers in the way that they should. There, there haven't been um, true direct action um, in response to the outcry. And relating to that, uh, we talk about bad laws. Swap Hamilton is a part of the Canadian Alliance for Sex Work Law Reform. And as a as a as an alliance they are participating in a lawsuit against the federal government uh, to bring back the decriminalization which was affected through the terry jean bedford case amy lebovich case and valerie scott case in 2014 so 
we are participating in advocacy in that way. And if we are able to affect decriminalization in Canada, it would provide sex workers with a better atmosphere where maybe the street-based sex workers who have the opportunity to work indoors would do so more so because they have the opportunity to not be criminalized and targeted in the same way. So it's a holistic approach. Um, and as our space that we have, we will be up, as I said, up like improving and, and um, doing more programming and services, but also we're gonna be a sex worker centered community, social space. So, you know, for someone that isn't in the sex industry, someone that doesn't know anybody in the sex industry who maybe wants to come in and learn, participate in an event, you know, foster relationships and friendships with people that, that know about these issues so that they can learn and that they can raise their consciousness and maybe, you know, overcome a prejudice that they had before that they didn't know about. And all it took was a personal understanding of the issue and a personal relation to the issue. So we're, we take many, um, you know, beyond education, beyond just existing in community, um, we also are trying to uh, involve people interpersonally. In fact, today we're actually going to speak with Narendra Nan at one o'clock. We have an appointment with her. So, um, cause we do, you know, Mikey's cream pies, the business uh, to our left and, uh, the business, the Barton business improvement association, they've, they've been really welcoming. Um, unfortunately there have been a couple of business owners locally that, that aren't, uh, as, as welcoming, but we, um, you know, we, we believe that, uh, we're here <laughs> we're queer so to speak and uh, you know some of us are some of us are racialized some of us are queer some of us are asian some of us there's there's a wide variety of people who do sex work um transgender two-spirit um and the perspectives that that are brought forth um ultimately have a very large class analysis and a very large labor analysis and that's what i think hamilton is known for and so we as swap hamilton are super excited to be part of the community and participating in bringing that compassion, making our streets safer just by being a more loving community, you know? I love that. And I think, you know, for those businesses that are not accepting of you yet, I mean, once they get to know you, how could they not be? Right? Like, we sure hope so. You're putting out, the, you're putting out love, right? That's all I hear from you whenever I speak with you is like love, acceptance, dignity, safety. Um, let's talk a little bit about street safety. It's really great that, you know, the council is considering the conversion to two-way street, but we also, there have been criticisms of that as well. Like we think it might just be a band-aid solution and we hope that there will be a real comprehensive and uh, human response to, to this issue. Everybody deserves to be safe on the streets in Hamilton, regardless of who they are, um, regardless of what kind of work they're doing. And all people in the community should be able to participate in the events in the community should be able to use the infrastructure should be able to walk should be able to bike should be able to drive safely and we shouldn't be prioritizing only vehicles um that is automobiles uh in in our infrastructure our city infrastructure so so for sex workers uh, in particular and our, our other guest who's on the program um today is talking about, you know, the different impacts of unsafe streets, you know, the, the narrow sidewalks and the fast traffic and, and the rest of it. Um, for sex workers who some uh, uh, work outside, and what is that, the, what kind of extra stress or danger has, have they been experiencing because of these just unsafe streets from an infrastructure point of view? The city could work to make the infrastructure harmonious for not just community members that are living, purely residing in the neighborhood, but also for those that are working in the neighborhood, whether it's sex work or otherwise. Um, I also think of the accessibility of bicycles as well in town and the safety of cyclists um, in comparison to the safety of people in vehicles. Like that's a, there's a stark contrast. And um, beyond all of the, the mechanical uh, threats, we also think of like human threat, like police violence. Um, you know, sex workers in Hamilton uh, have been targeted by the police for violence. Locally, um, we do have a, an unfortunate example of police violence against sex workers. Um, we had Shadrana Abdi. She was a refugee uh, from Somali, um, transgender woman uh, who did sex work. And she, uh, I believe she also was a drug user and she had a uh, call to the police on her one night because she was having a mental health episode uh, it, as a result of um, induced psychosis. And the police officers who responded to the scene found her in a mental health state and 
they responded inappropriately. And, and, and what happened was that she was dragged down the stairs face first, her teeth were knocked out, and she ended up dying as a result of um, that, that interaction um, of a brain injury. And unfortunately, because she was transgender um, and she came to Canada to be safe, to be in a society where being transgender is more accepted, um, her family, who wasn't as accepting of that, never followed up on her, her death uh, as a result of the HPS interaction. And unfortunately, you know, her death wasn't investigated properly. Um, there was never any formal charges or finding of misconduct because people don't seem to care about people that they consider to be less than. And so Swap Hamilton tries to combat that stigma, which results literally in the death of people. Robin Maynard, who is the author of Policing Black Lives, she has uh, spoken about Chevrona FD before, specifically the intersection of violence against police workers, or sorry, the violence against police, um, violence from police against sex workers, and also uh, against racialized folks and the intersection of that. And we believe that sex workers being targeted by police is something that's underspoken about, and it's not something that sees much justice either, because when a sex worker is a victim of sexual assault, for example, it's often written off as an occupational hazard, which is wrong. Well, it breaks my heart, uh, breaks my heart, Yelena, to hear that. I mean, we think of the police violence against the um, the caregivers at the encampment, the young, the youth that were arrested, um, Roa Muhammad, who had the knee on her neck. Um, those charges were dropped after the community stood up in solidarity with the youth, and it took months. Um, yeah, uh, but you know what? There's clearly more that we need to stand up and speak about as a community. And, you know, the so whether it's, you know, the safety just on the streets because of the logistics and the fact that the idea of harmonious street design with the work that goes on in that area that you talked about, whether it's stroll and the sex workers or the deliveries or whatever, how do we design a city that makes everybody feel safe and included? And how do we also um, create, as you talked about, a more competitive passionate city where sex workers are understood as people who are working, you know, uh, and, and they're people, and we should get to know each other, and um, we should protect each other's rights, and, and try to make a better city for everyone. So I thank you for being here, and um, for making us more aware of these issues, but also just for helping us understand what SWAP is doing, and, and how we can support it. And so uh, June 6, if people can make it in person, great. If they want to watch it online, you'll make that available as well. Uh, yeah, Elena, thank you so much for being on the O Show. I can't thank you enough for raising these issues and being one of the voices that people trust on the issues that they care about in Hamilton. Thank you so much. And again, if anybody wants to join the event, 771 Barton Street East from 7 to 9.30 p.m., you can join in person or online. We'll post a streaming link and Carol Lee will be there and we'll be showing a wonderful documentary. Thank you so much, Laura. And for if you love politics in Hamilton, you better watch the O Show. <laughs> I love that. And I have to say, Yelena, that um, you mentioned that people can come into the space and just get to know each other. And isn't that often the solution to a lot of things? It's just understand yeah. other people's path and their journey and who they are. Um, Conversation. To, yeah. be, to be a good neighbor, you don't necessarily have to agree. You have to agree that you should live and let live, that you both deserve to exist in a world in this society in this community and in this city and live and let live well said thank you so much have a great day thank you so much